there are hidden opportunities waiting for you in your texts, mm. in your emails, in your profiles, if you choose to take them. Yeah. And all it takes is a couple of word swaps. Like I'm not talking yeah, about 15, I'm, in that direction sheet, they sprinkled in like two or three words, mm. win. Re even reading the word win makes the other person think more like a winner. Yeah. What a gift to give. Yeah, that's cool. The, the quote that I heard in high school from Roosevelt is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Ah. Saved my life, literally. Because, that's more than competence right be, there. Because I didn't feel competent my entire school life, right? Mm. In school, I was at the bottom of my class. I just graded poorly, which confirmed like I'm not smart enough or like I'll never be able to be as intelligent as my classmates or anyone in the world. Yeah. So why would anyone like me or trust me because I didn't feel competent? Mm. Then when I heard that quote, I go, I have a chance. Like I can build competence in another area of life. I can be emotionally intelligent and I can show people how much I care. And by doing that, that's been pretty much my whole life. Everyone who's listening, I hope what this shows you is that caring about someone, mm -hmm. there's multiple ways to do that. Yes, it's emotionally intelligent, but it's also honoring someone's cues or mm -hmm. gifting them the right cues. Yes. When you make someone feel more like a winner, what a gift you just gave them. Huge gift. You're putting confidence into them. You're speaking joy, yes. confidence into that person. Yes, you're literally gifting them the chemical mm. dopamine so that they themselves have more motivation. Yes. And don't we all need more motivation? Absolutely, yeah. Um, can I, since you shared a vulnerability, can I share a vulnerability sure. and a compliment? Sure. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So I've been so excited to tell you this. So your book, School uh -huh. of Greatness, uh -huh. um, I love the cover. I just thought it was so inspiring. And when I was taking my cover shoot for Captivate, uh, so this is six years ago now, it was not going well. Uh -huh. I was super awkward. My my photographer, amazing uh, Maggie Kirkland, was like, "Listen, like this isn't working. You're really awkward. I need you to relax. Mm -hmm. like, I can't relax. Right? The worst thing you can do to for someone who's anxious is tell them to relax." So we weren't getting the shot. We weren't getting the pictures. And she's like, "Okay, just think about your role models. Who's your role model?" Mm -hmm. and I was like, "Lewis House." So she pulls up your book, <laughs> and she goes, "Okay." And she said, "Look at Lewis. Mm -hmm. Channel him." And so in the shoot, I channeled you and I, I did your pose of my hands mm -hmm. over my stomach with your face. And crazily enough, that is the Captivate that cover. That was a shot. I'm gonna send you the How full version. How many books version. you sell? How many copies you get? A lot, a lot, a lot. I better, I better send you some royalties. <laughs> so anyway, I channeled That's you cool. because that even that cue, there was something about it. So I, I thank you for even the cues that you send out because that mm. gifted me confidence yeah. we didn't even know about there it. There you go, I appreciate it. I'm glad, I'm glad it worked. What's well, another thing yeah. that in the shark tank? We talked yes. about sparking dopamine. What else? Okay, so we talked about reading, we talked about dopamine, we talked about interactivity, uh -huh. we talked about um, complimenting in a way that allows someone to see themselves in you or pulling mm -hmm. out a similarity, That's good. right? So like, you know, like you, Lori, we really value. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Wonderful, we love Mr. Wonderful <laughs> products, right? Like that really helped. I mean, it sounds like sucking up, but actually it, it, it really it works. works. It really worked. The other thing that we noticed about the interactivity is what they would do is they would cross space zones. So they would have something to give the sharks and they would go mm. from the carpet to the chairs. That worked usually. That worked because they were going into intimate zone very quickly. So this is called a nonverbal bridge. It's kind of an advanced technique. Do you want to talk about it? Yes. Okay. So a nonverbal bridge is a way that we cross into someone's intimate space, but safely. So what happens is when we're with someone, we want to connect with them. We want more oxytocin. We want to bond with them. Yes. But sometimes it can be hard to break that boundary. A nonverbal bridge is a way that we can create oxytocin with permission. So that could be handing someone something. That could be giving a high five. That could be touching their elbow. And that is exactly what successful pitchers did. They would have a reason or an excuse to, hey, Lori, let me guide you up here. Hey, Kevin, let me zip on this suit for you. Mm. Hey, um, you wanna try this amazing uh, cinnamon roll? And when they did that, they created these small little bridges. So what I would think right. about is like, how can you create bridges to people where you're engaging them even physically? Right, and that's harder on video, but in person, that was a thing that we found in the, right. in the tank. How do you do it in a way that the person feels comfortable if you touch them on the elbow? Because someone may not feel comfortable. Right. So you have to be really intuitive to, you know, is this person going to be receptive to me? Are they already interested enough where I can yes. get closer? Yes, yes. Not Are just, they leaning in? Yeah. Are they giving eye contact? Are they nodding? Oh, I forgot another one that was really important. So um, vocal power. So we haven't really talked about vocal power. And this was a big one in the tank. So we hear confidence. 
we hear competence. And the biggest way that we do this is with inflection. Mm -hmm. So inflection is, uh, the biggest mistake that we make is the question inflection. So the question inflection is when we go up at the end of our sentences, right? <laughs> yeah, it's also yeah. called up talk. So if I were to- but Don't do up talk. Don't do up talk. Okay. We're gonna talk about why. Yes. So when we use the question inflection, it cues the other person's brain to know, ah, we're being asked a question. The problem is, is that when we accidentally use the question inflection, it makes people question you. Right. Are they really trustworthy? Are they really tr right. So what happened is in this study where they looked at doctors, they found that the doctors who had, uh, so I'll break down the study. So what they did is they asked doctors to record 10 second voice tone clips. Mm -hmm. And they said like their name, their specialty, where they worked. So it sounded like, <clears throat> hi, my name is Dr. Edwards. I work in oncology. I specialize in uh, children's medicine, something like that. They took the clips and they warbled the words. So you couldn't understand the actual words being said. So it sounded like, how about a little, how about a little, how about a little, how about a little. Right? Yeah. Then they asked people to rate these clips on warmth mm. and competence. Mm. Right? Again, this research has been repeated over and over again. Imagine this for a second. You're asked to listen to a clip of gobbledygook. Mm, yes, to see if they're to, competent so, and are they trustworthy. Smart? Yeah. Are they smart? Well, do you like them? Yeah. And people do it. What they found is the doctors who had the lowest warmth and competence ratings had the highest rate of malpractice lawsuits. Wow. That implies that we don't just sue doctors based on their skills. We sue doctors based on our perception of their skills, and that happens in the first few seconds of hearing them. So your communication is everything. Everything. It's not just the words you're using. Are they warm? Are they competent? It's even how you're saying the words. Wow. So the very first story I break down in the book, and this is in the intro, so if you want to just look at the sample chapter, you could. I analyze Jamie Siminoff's pitch. Jamie Siminoff is the founder of Ring. That didn't get didn't any money, get. then it sold for a billion dollars. Thank yeah. yes. Here is a brilliant guy, right? Jamie Siminoff is brilliant. He had a successful product, right? Ring is a very successful product. Amazon acquired it for over a billion with a B dollars. Yet, he goes into the pitch in the Shark Tank and he pitches and he doesn't get a deal. Why? That pitch plagued me. Because I was like, here is a smart guy with a great yeah. idea, but his cues were the problem. The, I think that he lost his pitch. And I, this is a really big, a really big statement, and if you listen to it, you'll hear it. I think he lost the deal in the first ten seconds of them hearing him, and the reason is, is he made the choice to close the doors to the tank. So in his pitch, he doesn't walk down the hallway. You don't see that long first impression. Mm. You don't get public to social to personal. He closed the doors, and what he did is he went. He knocked on the door of the they're shark like, tank. Hello, who's and they're there? Like, uh -huh. They're like, hello. And he goes, it's Jamie? Uh -huh. So he asked his own name. And when you're a shark and you're trying to make a very quick first impression of someone without seeing them and you hear the question inflection, it's supposed to be used on a statement. You immediately begin to question, I don't know. And that is also because we know that liars are more likely to use the question inflection. If you've ever played a Two Truths and a Lie, have you ever played that game? Yeah. Okay, so two truths and a lie. Here's a little tip for everyone. If you ever yeah, play yeah. that game, people almost always ask the lie. So they'll be like, oh yeah, two truths and a lie. Um, I uh, have a goldfish, I am a vegetarian, and I love dogs. Mm. They almost always go up on their lie. And that's because we, when we're lying, we don't know if you believe us. Mm -hmm. So subconsciously we give it away. So Jamie starts his pitch, and he doesn't have a first impression. He doesn't do any greeting in the hallway. He misses that whole walk up. The very first words out of his mouth, doesn't even matter what he says, is And then Mark Cuban says, uh, are you here to pitch? And he says, here to pitch? Again, using the question inflection. I think that what happened was, is it gave away his competence. Huh. And then the doors open, right? And he explains this idea of ring, it's a doorbell. The problem is, is his first impression was very low in competence. And so he had a lot of trouble having the sharks take him seriously. He was a very competent individual building his business, right? He was very smart, very. intelligent, knew the technology, how to build product, teams, all these things, get sales, whatever it was. But the warmth wasn't there as well, it seems like, right? Like he, the trustworthy, charisma, warmth, yes, confidence. Yes, he under-signaled every step of the way. Mm. So he under-signaled under warmth, he under-signaled competence, and then was trying to dial up competence. Yeah. And you hear in the rest of the pitch, he's- He's trying to build it back yeah. up. He's like, yes. but we've done this, and look what and we this, got this technology. And this, and this money, and then this. And so he cannot get it back. 
You could wow. not get it back. And so I think I watched that pitch and I break it down in the book of what happened to this brilliant guy who yeah. had one bad day. And I think that if he, he, you know, he scripted those answers, he prepared for that pitch, and he had really good verbal answers. There was even a couple times where I think this thing happens for people who over rehearse. So if you have an interview or a presentation, what do you do? You rehearse it, right? You practice the perfect yes. answer. That can get in your way, though, because if you practice the perfect answer, this is exactly what happened to Simonoff, and very highly intelligent people do this. He would hear a question from a shark, usually a challenging question, because they were like really pushing him on the deal, and they didn't believe him. No one believed him. They all thought, oh, no, it's too crowded of a market. It will yeah. never work. They literally said that to him. <laughs> okay, I have ring on my front door. Yeah. And they literally said never. He could not get them to leave him because what would happen was is they would ask him a question. He would start to answer it organically. And then he would switch into his rehearsed answer. Oh, no. So you would hear, oh, oh yeah, yeah, we do have market track. Our market traction has been wonderful. In fact, in the last mm. five years, we've done X numbers. And you would be like, who is this robot? Yeah, just say what's on just, your heart. Yeah, yeah, just say it organically. Right. And so I think... Um, you can be the smartest person in the world. You can have the best ideas. But if you don't share them right, you're not helping people help you. And so that that's my, it drives me crazy when smart people can't get their ideas heard. And that pitch crushed me. I felt so bad for him. And he made it. He's okay now, yeah, he's right? Fine. He's doing really well. And then he was like a guest shark or and, whatever, yeah. Okay, and what's amazing is when you watch him walk into the tank as a shark, you can see the difference. You can feel the difference. The confidence, oh, yeah. Oh, my you know, he walks into the tent, he walks down the hallway, right? He walks down the hallway, he's smiling, he gestures, hey, everyone, good to see you. He shakes hands. He does all the things he didn't do in that original mm. pitch. And um, you can see the difference. And it has a, he's the same person, same person, same ideas, similar suits, yet he looks like a different person. We tend to believe people automatically. Just hold a little bit of that back. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this guy's great, or gal's great. I just connected with them. And then what we do, we go nose in. And so you don't want to give unconditional trust.